We're jam-packed with Film Don't Lie tonight as we try to show you what happened with Georgia and Alabama as the Bulldogs lost in the SEC Championship. We are presented by Breda Pest Management and ASW Distillery. We'll tell you more about them later in the show. Brent, I'm going to skip some of the pleasantries. We're going to dive in because we have 16 plays here talking about Georgia's passing attack. We'll talk more about Jalen Milrow in other videos. We'll talk more about Georgia's running game and Georgia's defense. This is all about passing game for Georgia and blocking some of that as well. So let's start here with Lad McConkey uh, off of a, a fake early in the game. Still, you know, on a bum ankle and still creating space. Like it's it was amazing to watch him because he got tripped towards the end of the first half and he was limping badly, which this is nice, at least that is I think it was his right ankle that was all uh, beat up. Uh, but the biggest thing early in this game, and obviously this this is the first drive and it's a su successful touch, touchdown drive, the pace, the pace with which Georgia was playing early was just, I, I think it needed to be that the whole game. And it just slowed down and slowed down. Then after you get a three and out, three and out, just slowed down. But here, great play action. Got Bama thinking there and one way, go the other. That's the first potential first round pick he's working on out there. Too. Yeah, and one theme to me was this man right here. We didn't see him much because he got injured, but Amarius Mims you'll see early in these highlights. Um, he, he, he Alabama didn't do much against him. No, he and he had 11 snaps. He didn't give up pressure. He's the one that was just physically handling whoever was on him. Trust had four pressures allowed. Like, and I think every offensive lineman had at least one. Uh, Fairchild only played like 11 snaps or, or didn't play a ton. Morris played more than him. So, like, you know, just his presence was was huge. Or, you know, missing him. All right, next play we're going to look at, Georgia, and it's on territory here with uh, – this is going to be – Bowers kind of down the seam is what the shot's going to be. We have a couple angles of this too. And, and this, I like the idea. Just not executed. I, I thought that was PI. Like I did think this one was just because like he's trying to go up and make a catch and he's getting just physical to death and not allowed to go try to make a catch. I do think two things. One, if he throws a better ball, they might get like he, like if you, the safety overruns this. Mal, like the, I think it's Malachi Moore maybe comes in. The ball, he has to go backwards for the ball because he's thinking it's going to be, you know, closer to Bowers. But the biggest thing with this drive to me was one on first down, you had the negative play where it was just a dump down to Bowers, like because this was the three and out after the touchdown drive. And you got whipped, Love it got whipped by their DB. And then on second and 13, Beck, like he did his scramble out and just missed Lad almost. You know, coming out of the end zone, throw, or was in the end zone throwing, but he missed an in rhythm throw. I think to Dylan Bell, mm -hmm. and like it was a, it should have been a quick hitch up, hit Bell on the in breaking route that was there. He missed that. Now you put yourself in third and long, and this is like I said, I like the chance this to get this first down, but you just didn't execute. I never know what reads they make, so I don't want to say that. But if you're looking at attacking space, look what Dylan Bell has to work with here, right off of the line of scrimmage. Now the the safety shies toward Bowers once. He reads what Beck's doing, but I, I, I would like something deep here to Bell. If that's the read, I don't know if it is. Yeah, and the thing, another theme, by the way, is that this play kind of shows Caleb Downs. Oh, monster. Like, this time last year, he was getting ready to play the state championship for Mill Creek, I think, right? When it wasn't a Mill Creek that he, he went to. But I, he so he's he's a future first-round like top 15, top 10 type pick, him and Malachi books. Uh, after some struggles, Georgia needs a completion, um, trying to get a first down, a little comeback here, Dylan Bell. Yeah, and once once you got through the first couple drives, you saw Georgia trying to get – kind of get into its rhythm plays. Like we've shown this same play all year where it's swing, potential swing pass out one way, and then you're looking at the one-on-one -on -one to the other side. And here's the key. You had to win one-on-ones in this game. Like, they played man, and they played a good bit of man. And, you know, we're going to show some later where you just didn't win one-on-ones. And, and just watching the game from the the big the all-22 of you re-watching it, like, it, it's one where there weren't a lot of right answers. And there weren't covered – there was only one or two maybe coverage busts that were missed. But it was, it was just tough sledding because of – 
uh, the coverage that Bama played. And they were physical and, you know, all the things that go with that. But, you know, that was shown to be allowed and early. After the motion here, you just see the space that this is one-on-one over here. And then look at the attention that Bowers is commanding. This happened the entire game. Even they bracketed him a lot. Like, yes. They were making sure that Bowers was not going to be the player to beat them. Georgia's path to beating Alabama was using that and working to the other guys in their one-on-one situations. And like I said, sometimes that worked out, and sometimes it just didn't. And there's, like, re-watching, there's only one for me where it's like, okay, this this guy should have got, like, Bell a little bit more so, but he's more on the outside. Like, to me, Lovett was the guy that I would have wanted to see really just – hammer down to this is awesome by the way right here yeah i knew this was going to be one that you raved over with your quarterback heart because there's nowhere to throw the football yeah i'm going to pause it where like where do you get safety coming down locked up locked up locked up bracketed on the left like there's nowhere to go to the football I mean, the only thing is maybe in the way. It's dealt but the refs right there and yeah kind of blinded so this is just it's great work from him and the interesting part was like there's one later where it's like, do the same exact thing. You could have done the same exact thing, but he went the other way later. But this was just it was good, phenomenal work from Beck. And then you self-destructed after this. Well, small kudos here to Kendall Milton because you have to sneak through the offensive line here to be able to run away this linebacker. And like it takes some pretty good footwork to do that and allow this space to be there for Beck. Yes. Little things. Little things, very much so. And Georgia didn't do a lot of those little things super well. And, and uh, like, especially like that drive, like that drive right after that, that's, you know, that's the missed field goal drive where you ended up going backwards uh, the rest of the time. Keep your eyes on the left side of the offensive line here, Ernest Green and Micah Morris. And this is one where if you could like, turn, by the way, Dallas Turner only played 29 snaps. Yeah. I didn't like re I thought it a little bit because I was watching to see where both of them were during the game. Rewatching it, it's like they purposely said, hey, we're going to, play our more physical guy, which is Braswell. And Turner's going to play occasionally. And once Georgia was in full out pass mode, then they started playing both of them. But if he, this is one where down here, I think, is this the third down right before the field goal, uh, right before the missed field goal? Yeah. 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 And like, because it pushed him back even further. If he could have just held a little bit longer, like, because I think what, the reason Bell doesn't throw this to Bowers is right when right here, the safety still kind of the safety that's to the Bowers right. Yeah, right there. He's still kind of in phase in a way, potentially in on the play. But if just a little bit more, just right there, he's see now he's squatting. Yeah. Now that he's squatting, like now you can throw that ball straight over top of three's head. And you got a one on one and you got your bigger player where you throw it up a little high, about you know, yay far above the player's helmet. Bowers jumps up and gets it there but you just didn't have the time yeah and by the time that that has developed yep, look what's exactly. bearing in into your back hip here yep i mean he was pressure and the interesting thing like you could tell his spot uh his he was sped up especially in the middle part of the game i think towards the end of the game he just said screw it and just started ripping stuff but uh he was only pressured like it wasn't even the most he's been pressured all season 24 percent, i think for his dropbacks eyes on roseman here again you had to win one-on-ones and same sort of stuff. This is their go-to when they need to get in rhythm, need to get quick, you go win on one-on-ones and did a good job here. Just being the guy, make, being physical with the catch. George is going to miss that guy. He's going to have a long career in the NFL. Yes. So very true. And like that was the, in terms of my fear, if there was any fear going into the game was just Bama being insanely elite at coverage that it threw you out of rhythm. And for the most part, they were. Next up, we talked a lot in the last few weeks about Arian Smith getting involved more in this offense. We have back-to-back plays here that he's involved. And this was an, just a great job by Kool-Aid coming off of his coverage. But what's interesting about the play is I, I would love to know if this was a defined shot call. Because Beck, for me, the way he moves with this is I'm throwing this ball to Smith no matter what. And then, because Bowers is open, like, boom, right here, hitch up, boom, hit Bowers, right in the chest. Like, hit him. But I almost think this was a design shot play. Now, I will say one other thing. I, 
if Aaron Smith, and I don't think he's going to be on Georgia's roster next year, but if he is, this is one thing, one area. He's not – I mean, he he just hasn't shown to be a contested catch guy. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather see any throw to him much be like the next one that we're getting ready to show where he just maybe puts this to the corner of the end zone and let him go be faster than everybody else. Like when he throws this here, I mean, just go put it to the other side of the A and let him go run over. But, you know, great job by McKinstry. If he doesn't get it, Aaron's up and quick enough. I think it's going to be a good catch. But, you know. This was by far the play. best secondary that Georgia had played this year. Alabama secondary is the real deal. And I think Georgia's is too. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But these guys close space very quickly. So a yep. lot of those lanes and those holes and those throwing windows that have been there for Georgia, they just got eaten up by better athletes in this game. And, and, and Missouri, like Missouri had great corners, but they weren't strong in the middle of the field. Yeah. And that's I, I thought you'd see Georgia attack more in the middle of the field. They didn't necessarily hear. Here's Arian on the left slot here. I think it, most people know this play. And rem- like remember our halftime played. conversation. What was the first thing you like what's what's the first thing I said? Everything's in tight. Everything is sort of closed space. You needed to alleviate some of that. And this was at this was the second drive of the second half, I think. And I think it was just time like, all right, we're just gonna take a shot. And you need because you needed to. And you got it on the safety, you got the matchup you wanted, and he won. He did, but funny enough, this is like the throw you were saying. He put a little bit more air into this yes. and let Arian go out underneath that yep. rather than he kind of stops and has to do a contested catch. Yes. 100 percent so this kind of leads him there. That was a really big play for Georgia oh, to gain no much needed play, much needed play for any sort of momentum, all that sort of stuff that, that was going on in this game. All right. We have Dom Lovick in motion up here against the, the red zone. This There's a whole lot of things going on with this play. I'm going to start it back a, at, at the line of scrimmage here. I just wanted to let it play one time. Yeah. This could have been an interception, but yes. am I safe to assume you're going to start by talking about more Ernest Green being pushed back into the pocket? Uh, I mean, a little bit, but not really. Okay. Because there, I don't I don't know if there's anywhere to go with the football here. All right, pause right here. So the only place to really go with the football, Beck knows where it is, and he's ready to do it. But his running back doesn't get his head around just in time. Like, watch here. Watch as Dajan comes free from the back right there. Beck's ready to throw it. He separates. He's like, oh, I'm going to dump it. The, but by that time, Edwards. he has a hand on the shoulder. Yeah. And he's and his head wasn't look. His head wasn't around yet. Like, back I'm it up just a little bit. Up. Yeah. All right. Boom. Right there. So, he's ready to throw. Like, he's he's separated and ready to throw, but his head wasn't quite around. So, boom, there. The other thing. All right, go back a little more. Is every time you see this one, back up just a little more and pause it right, right after, right before he breaks the pocket. Right here. So, right here. Pass, you see this all the time. You see this quote on Twitter, and you see some other like a guard come in when a tackle is blocking or a tackle come when the guard's blocking. They say pass pro is not passive. Trust has to bury this guy. Like he sees that the that he was blocking the guy who's on Edwards. He backs away, covers Edwards. He now to me has to bury that guy and just destroy the guy that's with him. But he takes a breath right there, takes a breath, and then now that's the guy in Beck's face. Because when Beck breaks the pocket, Dajan is wide open behind everybody, by the way. Yeah. If he's not, if there's nobody in his face, he just throws it to the open space and it's a touchdown. But again, I, I like I said, you've, yeah, he gets behind. But this if there's was nobody attempted. there. Was he trying to throw it to he him? Was to, and he, he was trying to, to throw it to Bowers. Okay. He was trying he to get was trying Bowers to across. Like a back shoulder because all the momentum was going, going yeah. that way. And you really can't see it super well from this angle, but this could have easily been a red zone interception. Yep. But oh yeah, it was it was dropped. It was a drop pick. Beck was trying to make a play here. And I, I'd say there were two or three of these kind of plays that Alabama could have had two or three interceptions off of Beck. And this was this was definitely one of them. Um yeah, not not a great play for Georgia for multiple reasons. I think it starts with both tackles. Uh but again your running back needs to show some awareness there too. Yeah. It's just you're just a and that's I think that's the biggest thing is you're just a hair off. You're a slight little block. You're just a slight little, like him not getting his head quite a, just a little bit. Like everything in the game, like some decision making, like all of it was just a hair off, not the normal Georgia that, you're, that we're used to seeing. That's for sure. I believe this is Dylan Bell. Yep. Well, yeah, this is a heck of a catch. Yeah. Considering but, like he was raped all on him. Uh, well, the ball was put in a perfect spot. Yes, that's a good, great throw. 
That's an NFL yeah. throw. That that like, is an NFL route and NFL throw. And watching him, uh, I thought like watching this live because this is we're looking right down at this from where the press box seats are. I thought he was going to love it, but it's a good thing he didn't because we love it probably catches this and then just gets destroyed by the safety coming Ooh, down. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, so but great throw, great because I think this that was also third down, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they need to move the sticks there. Yep. Caught a little one on one round and it worked out. Yep. All right. You thought that was going to love it? This one did. Yeah, this one did. And this he he was the one guy just watching this game where I thought him and sp- him in in between the numbers and working quick stuff, I thought should have been more involved. This was my only outside of some of the third down run calls that we're going to get into when we look at the running game that that were just one was really bad. Uh, but outside of that, this was the only thing where I thought, okay, this is when a guy, specifically a player, that you could have used and attacked with more. This was a second and six with about 10 seconds left, third quarter final play. Look how Alabama just like drops back and says, we'll give you all that. Like with what the score was, with what you need, we're just not letting this guy get behind us here. Yep. And so Georgia had to, to play to that. And I know a lot of people are talking about, well, why didn't Mike Bobo do this and that? Well, look, this play here has some deeper down the field threats, but you know what's open? Right here in the middle of the field. So you have to take it. Yep. Definitely. This, this is not a great rushed. one because like I said, at, at this point in the game, I think we're in the fourth quarter into the fourth quarter now here. Yeah, we are in fourth quarter. And it's there's a there's a vibe of hey, we gotta do something. Like we gotta have a spark in some way. And I, I this he just rushed himself. Two straight two straight plays, or well, this play and then I think the third down play that we're gonna show just rushed himself. And what's interesting here is by the way. Bama blitzed in this game five times. That's it. Five times. Beck was five of five for 56 yards. That's a four man rush time, with, with the five blockers. Like they most of the time, better. most of the time they just said, we're just going to rush our four guys and we're going to cover and make it just tough for you. And here, what's interesting here is like the feel of, okay, the, the, the two guys to my right are the ones going past me. That's where I need to go. And he kind of goes yeah. left. But the other thought thing here is the rushed himself part is we've seen it this year already where he sort of swipes the ball through like here, swipe ball through, check up, reset, reset your feet, and then throw it right between those two guys to Bowers. Boom, reset, laser right there to Bowers. Like, or even this underneath right here. Yes, either. But I, that's again, I thought I think he was kind of pressing because you could see it maybe and. This is the uh, the, the next play. Maybe is the one that's kind of similar because it's third down. He, he's not Milrow athlete wise. Like there really is another one. Maybe Jaden Daniels, but I do think all future iterations of championship teams are going to have quarterbacks. And he does the sum, but the, when needed, if, and we showed it already. If, if this lanes here, they always are going to take that and and go with it. And because what happened, and you saw George do this, those linebackers would be a little bit closer here. To, yeah. to stop QB run, stop QB power, and right. then that opened up stuff down the field here. Very, very true. Very it's true. And, and, and in the, the threat of the QB legs, like they know, hey, even if he does run, he's getting five, he's getting eight, no big deal. But he's if he can hurt us down the field, that's a way bigger deal. I mentioned one uh, possible interception that wasn't. This is probably one that could have been, but Dylan Bell makes a good job. He kind of played defense on this. By the way, number nine, I wasn't familiar. What's the what's the Shaq thing? I wasn't familiar with your I game. I wasn't familiar with, with your game. <laughs> uh, this was really good by him. But this is the one, again, where I'm. I, he's quick. He kind of pressing and, and being quick with things because, one, the the first down route is only is one, is one singular route, and you were highlighting it right there. That's the first down route. Everything, like Bell's route is short of the sticks. Hours route is short of the sticks, and then you got to, you know, over the top clear, clear out by area. So there's one throw here, and he just kind of comes off of it. Just and, and I, I could see maybe why he did because look where the corner, the, where the corner is, and the corner's got his eyes on him, especially if he's looking at the defense there. I think it's maybe it's Kool Aid, I think, but or Arnold, one of the three or one of the two, but. So, so he, you're saying he's reading eyes right like here? Like, he, he, he was, and then they, I think he came off of that because that guy's sitting there potentially thinking, hey, 
he's going to be as a, as a quarter player in that window yeah. uh, where love it is, ends up. But that's just one where, you know, e- either way, like this was a, you got one route to get the first down here. And the offensive line protected here. This was not For one that part. he was rushed, but he went pretty quick himself. Yep. And I don't and really, I, yeah, I don't really love Bowers route right there. Look, I, I'm not the coach. I don't know exactly what they're doing <laughs> here. But, like, at, at this point in the game, I wanted Bowers just doing this anywhere that he could, like get vertical. and um, you well, know, some, Sometimes you need easy catches. And I talk about him pressing. And then you could just see, what, like, even watching the tape and then even – live too i think he literally just said he just sat on the missions went out after that and said screw it i'm just ripping it yeah. and throwing the ball as hard as i can because the next three throws are just lasers well and uh, this one to mcconkey i didn't think there was any chance mcconkey was playing in the second half of this game after i saw him limp off like what an no. effort and then what a find here boom yes and then he, by the way he's at least he's able to, the route here, he's able to plant off his good foot, good ankle. Uh, but Beck throwing this ball, like, by the way, first, good job. Protection slides everybody right. You see the whole offensive line. He slides that right to see the protection. And I thought he was going to get in the end zone, but he didn't. That cost Georgia. Well, no, this, on this one, I think they quickly did the uh, QB sneak and got in. Yeah. Um, it was later. It cost him about a minute it, of time. Yeah, later it cost a lot of time. There's a lot of goal to go situations that cost him about three minutes or two minutes in, of game time. But yeah, he he started ripping it, and this was a great throw, great read. We get Makai Muse in on the action here with a late catch. I mean, think think about that. Fourth quarter. That's why I said it that way. S- SEC championship game, and this guy's making you. Know, not even he's not a scholarship player yet, is he? Not that we know of. Not that we know of, right? But that yeah, doesn't so, necessarily mean. Yeah, you know, so but it's it's a good read. And just his rotation on the throw, it's it's a full out plant. I'm not stepping into this. I'm just planting and, and rotating and, and zipping the ball as fast as I can. And the next throw is the same way, too. Yeah, just gorgeous. And this is and, uh, it, and, the, and the game of chance, by the way. You, sort of big picture. Like you're down the whole game, you're you're almost stuck in mud the entire game, and then you kind of get rolling. They, Bama goes right back down and scores again, and you go score in a hurry again. You gave yourself a chance. Like again, this is a laser throw, an amazing catch too. I was like, that's just this is perfect. But and, this is what we've seen all year long. Now there's tighter coverage than we've seen all year long. But right, these kind of plays, these kind of catches, these kind of throws, just didn't happen frequently enough in this game. And the tempo, like, I, I think biggest picture, and then they score, and I think they never see the ball again after this. Yeah. Um, we'll show what Milro did to make that happen in a uh, separate video. That was the sort of biggest thing that I thought going into the game we would see a lot of is tempo. But then when you get the three and outs, and then Bam is now taking a lead on you, like, it just – the flow of the game, and the, and they – Bama controlled the play, pace of the game. And that's and then in the end, like you look at the, like statistics and yards per play and all that sort of stuff, it's basically even. Mm-hmm. You penalize, you were more penalized. You turned the ball over. Like you had some special, you had a missed field goal. Special teams, like better, better teams don't make mistakes in those games, and that's what Georgia's always been. Georgia's always been the better team in those areas, in the fine tooth, fine tooth comb sort of areas, and they weren't yesterday. I kind of look at the final possessions of each half for Alabama and just how in control they were with their playmakers and how aggressive they had to be at the end of the second half. Like getting that touchdown rather than a field goal or nothing was the difference in the game. Mm-hmm. And we'll show off Georgia's defense in a separate film, the live video there, because you give up a third and 21, then you give up the fourth and four. Um, and then they end up going to score. Yes, I know, whatever mm-hmm. replay deal. But between that and then at the end of the game, with Milrow getting a couple first downs and not even giving Georgia a chance to do some Take crazy things at the end. Yep. I mean, they they had, would have killed the clock there. And, and they never had the ball with a chance to get the lead. They were just so confident in that. And if you go back and watch early Alabama, there was no confidence in that guy and what he was doing. And this, no. they, they've evolved their identity throughout the course of about eight weeks. Super hard mm-hmm. to do, super impressive to do. And in fact, once we talk about this is my tease for you. I, I had the realization with Milrow. Now, he's a better overall athlete. I'm not saying he is. 
Stetson Bennett's fourth quarter in the national championship game. Kind of some some Milro. I think Milro kind of channeled that in yeah. this game. Like in the clutch moments when he had to make plays, damn, he did. Yep. And Minus Jordan the turnover, you're 100 percent right. Yeah. Because Stetson had the weird fumble thing. Yeah. So that's where we land here with Film Don't Lie. George is passing him good and bad. We're about hey, to we got go. some Bama fans, I think, by the way, hanging out with us. Thank you for the for the Bama fans that's, for that's coming fine. and joining us. I mean, that's by all means. Uh, I think you're the national champion, Bama folks. So I mean I at least think you get your rematch with Texas. Well, the thing they live in again, they live in the they live in those I, I don't know that they're gonna get to 30 plus points against anybody without help because of his just general inconsistencies. That's the interesting thing. Well, I don't see JJ McCarthy scoring a whole lot on them. That's the of that. I, Mich- Michigan might help them. Uh huh. Uh huh. And if Florida State was punished for not having a quarterback, maybe Michigan should have been too. Just saying. <laughs> no, it's different things. All right. Now we're, now we're getting hot takey at the end of this. We're coming back with a double live here on our YouTube channel so you can uh, see us talk about Jalen Milrow and what Georgia did against him sometimes, what he did against himself sometimes, but mostly what he did to help Alabama win this game and get into the national championship hunt, win the SEC. Uh, Brent, we need to make sure we thank our friends at Braided Pass Management, the official pest yes. control of the Georgia Bulldogs. They uh, control Sanford Stadium, and they can control your home, make sure pests stay away from there. And this time of year, it's a little colder, some of those creepy crawlies maybe trying to get in your house. Don't let that happen. Brady Pest Management can really make sure that you're all set, even for when the spring comes around. And you know that things are going to be moving even more. Brady Pest, uh, they're awesome. They, they support a lot of high school football in the area as well. And uh, we just thank them for supporting Film the Lie here from UGA Sports. Also, ASW Distillery, founded uh, by five of the six founders, are UGA grads. They like to say that they were distilled by dogs. I like the Fiddler bourbon. I think you'll like the Hunker Vodka. And i tell you a lot, if you have uh some tito's vodka in in your spirits cabinet you're kind of supporting the university of texas because tito's gave two million dollars to the texas longhorns and i don't know that texas needs a whole lot of help these days and so if you're kind of looking at what happened to texas yesterday what happened to georgia yesterday and you may think about it and well that that's one small thing i can do to kind of boost up because it, every purchase of that hunker vodka a portion of that goes to classic city collective name image and likeness for georgia polar season or retention season, they're all the same. It's right called now. free agency. <laughs> and 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 you need assets, and that's a small way that that can happen. All right, thank you to ASW. Thank you to Brady Pass Management. We'll be on here for a second live show talking about Jalen Milrow and Alabama's offense. Thank you all for supporting Film Don't Lie from UGASports.com. <laughs>